We finished section 5.1. We spoke about what biodiversity is. We spoke about uh, some of the threats to biodiversity. And today we're going to talk about conservation of biodiversity. We didn't do this last time, did we? No. Okay, good. All right, so section 5.2, we're talking about conservation of biodiversity. What is conservation biology? It's a new field in, of biology, relatively new field. Um, it studies methods and implements plans to protect biodiversity. Last time we said uh, it's a problem when we have a decrease in biodiversity, and we spoke about some of the threats to biodiversity. Do you guys remember what those threats are? Yes. Number one, what was it? Habitat loss. Habitat loss. What was the second one? And what was the third one? Degradation. Degradation. And what is the fourth one? Introduction of exotic species. Now, when we spoke about habitat degradation, we said that there are three types of habitat degradation. What are they? Air, Air pollution, Air. water pollution, and Air. land pollution. Sweet. So those things cause problems. Um, it decreases biodiversity, and we don't like that because biodiversity is important. Why was biodiversity important? Number one. It adds beauty. Uh, no, you remember last time we said that it started raining and thunder. Really I know it's it's crazy. So it adds beauty. Life depends on life. And what was the third reason? It adds. Anybody remember what the third reason was? Stability. Correct. All right. So those are the three reasons why biodiversity is important. So we're talking about a field that studies method, methods, implement plans to protect <laughs> biodiversity. In this field, we're concerned with two things, speci species conservation and resource conservation. We want to um, conserve the species and the resources that are necessary for those species to survive. In 1973, President Nixon signed the, Endanger, the U.S. Endangered Species Act into law. And what this act says, um, under this law, it became illegal to harm any species on the endangered or threatened species list. Which one comes first, threatened or endangered? Threatened, threatened right? What is threatened when the numbers are going down, the numbers are going down rapidly? Endangered means, okay, it's possible that extinction is coming, all right? And then eventually if all the members die, then it is extinct, all right? So this law also made it illegal for the federal government to fund any project that would harm any animals on this list, okay? So we can't harm any um, endangered or threatened species, and no federal funding can go to any project that result in the harm of any species on that list. All right, uh, let's talk about some of the things that we do in order to protect biodiversity. The first one is preserving habitats. What is a habitat? Kind of like a home. Okay, what's the definition we looked at for, ha wait, did we look at a definition for habitat and niche? Oh, we haven't gotten there yet. Say that again? <laughs> no, you have to say that again, not just again. <laughs> a place where what? Okay, a place where an organism lives out his life. So that's where his or her or its, uh, anything, of that, anything of that sort. All right, so it's where you live, where the organisms live. Um, so one strategy for conser conservation is to protect an entire community. How do we do this? We do this by setting up nature preserves. And the first nature preserve, the first uh, national park was in 1872 um, in America, and that is the Yellowstone National Park. So another strategy for um, conservation would be by setting up habitat corridors, and those are protected strips of land that allows for the migration of organisms from one land area to another. All right, so instead of um, preserving the entire community, what we're doing is we're just preserving a strip of land that allows migratory organisms, uh, migratory species to go from one 
place to another. So this is like the next best thing if we can't protect the entire community. A next strategy would be reintroduction programs. And reintroduction programs, uh, that's when you release organisms into an area where the species once <coughs> lived. So what you do is, what they do normally is, if the numbers are declining rapidly and they become endangered, you can take them out of the wild, breed them so that they can reproduce and their numbers can start rising. And once their numbers are high enough, you take them and you reintroduce them into the wild. Uh, the most successful programs occur when organisms are moved from one natural habitat to another. Okay, so you take them out of one natural habitat, you put them, um, you, pr you protect them in a natural habitat. An organism held by people is said to be in captivity. So you take them out of the wild, you hold them in captivity, um, you have breeding programs to allow them to reproduce and their numbers to increase. Once their numbers are high enough, you reintroduce them into the wild, and that is your um, reintroduction program. That is your goal. And if you, th the best way to do that is by doing it from one natural habitat to another. Now, obviously, um, conservation of biodiversity is a very big issue, and there are a number of people that protest for animal rights and um, those type of things, and we've seen this on TV and so on, um, which because it's a, it's a very important issue. You change one species, you change the uh, population, um, you affect other populations, and that can have some devastating effects. That is all the theory. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at some s examples of endangered species. We know that over 19,000 plants and 5,000 animals are classified as endangered. Um, this is actually an old figure. I'm not sure what it is right now, but I'm pretty sure it's higher than that. Um, so that's a significant problem. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a few endangered species or threatened species, and you are responsible for being able to give examples of what some endangered species are. Are you ready? That was delayed. All right, endangered species number one, the California condor. California condor, isn't that a, a very attractive uh, bird? It's <laughs> considered for years to be <laughs> considered for years to be the most endangered species of bird in the United States. Was removed from the wild in 1988 in an attempt to increase its numbers through captive breeding programs directed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and only recently have the first captive hatchlings been reintroduced into the wild. Okay, so this was a, this was a, a relatively successful reintroduction program. They've been reintroduced to the wild with the hope that the numbers can increase significantly. Example number two would be the Sorwalski's horse. Um, and this, speci this species became, the, the numbers declined rapidly. It's a horse. It's a s <laughs> Sorwalski's horse. <laughs> that, how, that how you'd pronounce it would be Sorwalski's horse. You don't say Perzerwalski or anything of that sort. All right, so subsequent loss of habitat and hunting of the Sarwalski's horse by human beings caused such a drastic decline in the population that the Sarwalski's horse disappeared from the wild. Another example, the American alligator was declared to be an endangered species in 1967. Another example, and this is a sad story to me, but anyhow, um, the humorous swallowtail butterfly in Jamaica, um, it... It is, be, it is considered to be endangered, and the reason for that is people went to Jamaica and they thought it's so pretty, so they collect them, a lot of them, and now it's an endangered species. Like kill them and keep them? Yeah, kill them and co they collect them, they preserve them and all that kind of stuff so that they can have these nice uh, looking butterflies, and now they're endangered. Another example, 
The scimitar horned oryx. Look at those horns. Those are some long horns, aren't they? It does look like it could stab you, right? You can ride it and like a Harley, right? <laughs> there you go. All right, so the scimitar horned oryx inhabit the semi-arid southern edge of the Sahara. That's another example. Another example, the last example that we're going to look at would be the Tibetan yak, and it's most closely related to the African buffalo, the American bison, and the European bison. That is actually the end of section 5.2. It is the end of the chapter. It is the end of the end.